Well, Pastor John Hagee has done it again. He has written a book entitled The Three Heavens, and this is on the hills of his successful book, Four Blood Moons. What a delight to be in San Antonio, Texas, and welcome back to 100 Huntley Street as we are here at the Cornerstone Studio. Pastor John Hagee, it's so good to see you, sir. It's a pleasure to be with you, sir. Oh, I'm delighted that you're here. Congratulations on the book. Thank you. Uh, let me ask first, uh, we still have a blood moon to go. Yes. I think it's coming up in September. September the 28th. Congratulations on that book. Uh, as this is being aired uh, across Canada and the United States on 100 Huntley Street uh, in the month of June, we still have a few months to go for that fourth blood moon. Any insights, updates that you want to bring us before we dig into the three heavens? For those who have not uh, followed the four blood moons, for four times in over 500 years, uh, four blood moons have appeared. And the first blood moon appeared in 1492. Uh, first series of blood moons appeared in 1492 whenever King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella kicked the Jewish people out of Spain. And that's when Columbus discovered America. Then the second set of four blood moons uh, happened in uh, 1948 when Israel became a state. The third series of blood moons happened in 1967 when Jerusalem was connected to the state of Israel. Luke 21, the Bible says, whenever Jerusalem is no longer trodden down by the Gentiles, then the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. The Bible speaks of a set time to honor Israel. Right. And I believe that set time began with a second series of blood moons in 1948. And the focus of God right now is on Jerusalem and Israel because God wants his son Jesus Christ to rule the world from there but also the prince of darkness, Satan, wants the Antichrist to rule in the future the nations of the world and to worship him from there. That's why there is such a battle over the city of Jerusalem. Now we come to the fourth blood moon series that happened in the year 2014 and 2015. The uniqueness of this is that these four blood moons happened on Pentecost and Feast of Tabernacles in 2014 and 2015. Understand the miracle of this, which is something that's just driving the atheist up the wall, <laughs> that only God can align the sun, the moon, and the earth to produce the shadow of the earth's atmosphere on the moon to produce the blood moons. Only God could do that. And thousands of years ago, God set the date for Passover and Feast of Tabernacles in the Scripture. Therefore, God who controls the heavens and controls the exact date of Passover and Feast of Tabernacles has orchestrated this so that beyond any reasonable doubt, people can say only God is doing this. This is not random chance. Mm -hmm. And so God is announcing to the world that something big is about to happen. I believe the Third World War has already started. I believe the next conflict is going to be between Hezbollah and Israel. Hezbollah is really Hamas and Hezbollah are funded, trained, and equipped by Iran. Right. Hezbollah has 80 to 100,000 rockets that are ready to be launched into Israel anytime Israel may show any kind of resistance to Iran. And that's exactly the play. So the moment that Israel considers the military option to prevent being destroyed by a nuclear bomb, which our government is really giving no resistance to Iran at all. According to the Wall Street Journal, John Kerry is on his knees when he goes over to Iran <laughs> begging for some kind of uh, solution that can help him win the Nobel Peace Prize. <laughs> He's not any more interested in Israel. Uh, well, I, I won't say that. He's just not interested in Israel. So what we have here is... Very soon, 
the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, has this choice to make. Am I going to live and allow my people to live under a nuclear threat every day, or am I going to use this military power that we have to remove that threat from us? I believe that Israel will choose the military power to neutralize for a season Iran's nuclear capability, and that is going to be the birth pain that starts the final process that will produce the Third World War. And all of this, as you talk about this present day activity with another blood moon coming in September, yes. you also have this reality that uh, there is an eternity out there Absolutely. in which there are supernatural forces for good and evil working, Absolutely. which gets us into this three heavens yes. presupposition. Yeah. You uh, tell us, and the Bible reveals to us, if you study the Bible, that we think of heaven as being one general place, a place of peace, a place of eternal rest. But you say, let's, let's peel back the Scriptures more carefully, that there are three heavens. Yes. So let's walk through those in our first time together today, okay. those three heavens, and then we're going to break down throughout the rest of our time together what those heavens are like, um, who's engaged in all of that, the supernatural powers. And then there are some incredible personal stories that you tell as it relates to uh, these three heavens in your own life, which I found yes. very precious, yes. very, very precious. Um, let's talk about the first heaven. What's the first heaven? The first heaven is the heavens that we see with our natural eyes. Uh, King David said in Psalms 19, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord. Are these the stars and, and like these the moon? These the sun, the stars, and the moon. Okay. And he uses the word firmament, and the definition of firmament is the visible, physical heaven. Therefore, uh, that is the heaven that we see. The fact that there are three heavens is evidenced beginning in Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens, plural, plural right. and the earth. That is a that is a Hebrew feminine gender word that no biblical scholar can miss, that it is plural. Then St. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 12 and 2, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I was in the third heaven. Now logic says if there is a third heaven, there is a heavens one and two. So uh, as I began to uh, think about this, the first heaven is the sun, moon, and stars that we see with our natural eye. The second heaven is where heaven, where Satan has his throne, where he rules the kingdom of evil. He has as his uh, slaves to accomplish his mission the fallen angels that came with him in the revolt when uh, before Genesis 1 and 1, which were a third of the angels that were in heaven, mm -hmm. and... He commands from there the demonic powers that are on the earth. Some people think that demons are fallen angels. This is not true. Demons crave to inhabit the body of a human or of an animal in the scripture. But angels have their own specific body. Angels fly from place to place. And the Bible speaks of demon spirits that walk on the dry earth. So angels, of uh, demons are not fallen angels. So we have Satan in the second heaven commanding a third of the angels and the demonic powers on the earth. And we have the third heaven, which is where God the Father rules over all of the universe. He has absolute power over the second heaven and the first heaven. His son, Jesus Christ, is there. The archangels, the seraphims, the cherubims are there. Millions and millions and millions of angels are there because of the pure mathematical fact that David set into principle that he said in the, in the book of Psalms, he will give his angels charge over you to protect you in all of your way. Based on that verse of scripture, Billy Graham said, every believer has the biblical right to believe that you have at least two angels assigned to you to protect and defend you. Mm. 
I know some Christians that are probably worn out a couple of sets. But two angels, yeah. if you get in a church where there are 2,000 people, you have a biblical reason to believe that 4,000 angels are there. Hey, that's church growth right watching, there. That's right. That is what you call <laughs> dynamic growth. That'll get four, you on the top 10 list 4, right there. 4,000 <laughs> angels who are there yeah. almost every Sunday when I pray. I pray for the angels of God yeah. to encircle and encamp around the righteous wingtip to wingtip as we worship the Lord. All right, so we got a few minutes left. Tell the story that you're flying, uh, I think either from Washington, D.C., somewhere on the East Coast, you're flying back to Texas. You've got your family on the plane. Yes. You write about it in the book. Uh, your wife is not a great flyer. Your, you, your daughter at the time was younger. Yeah. And there was, a, there was an incident that happened in the air and you offered a prayer. I'm not going to give yeah. it away, but just tell the story as we wrap up this yes. segment. I had a speaking engagement in Washington, D.C. I took Diana, who is the global chairman of the Nervous Flyers Club. <laughs> I mean, just a little bit of turbulence and she's peeling the flesh off my arm. <laughs> My three children, Matthew, Tina, and Sandy, are in coach. We're up in first class. Sandy yeah. wanted to ride with me. Her mother pulled rank and said, back of the bus. Yeah. So we took off. And um, not Donna reads my face very well. And she said, uh, what's wrong? I said, we're not gaining altitude and we're going in circles. Yeah. She said, how you know? I mean, she said it in an accusatory tone. How do you know? And I said, well, we've just gone by the Washington Monument for the second time, and it's always on the left, which means we're going in a circle. And she reaches over and grabs my arm at about the time the captain says, ladies and gentlemen, we have mechanical difficulty. Uh, fasten your seat belts. We're going back to, to Dulles Airport. And... So the plane suddenly becomes quiet. The people who were drinking and yeah. saying ugly things to each other now are in stone cold silence. Yeah. And 30 seconds later, the pilot says, put your head between your, on, on your knees and prepare for crash landing. Now you hear people up and down the aisle say, our father which art in yes. heaven and just a few moments ago they were talking about anything but their father. Mm -hmm. They put their alcoholic drinks down and suddenly started to cry <laughs> to tune in to the heavenlies. The, yeah. wait, the stewardess who was beside me was crying and she was looking for the emergency manual. She couldn't find it, oh. which means she was totally unprepared for what was going on. So I prayed, I didn't put my head down. If we're gonna go into the ground 400 miles an hour, putting your head down between your knees is not gonna do one bit of good. So I <laughs> said, I lit and I said, God the Father, yeah. I ask you to send your angels to escort this plane back to Dulles Airport. Let us land safely and let not one person on this aircraft be injured. And as the plane is coming in, we can see the ambulances and fire trucks lined up right and left, all of their lights going, and they are racing down the uh, runway as the plane lands smooth as silk and we come to a stop. My daughter Sandy starts running down the aisle of the plane. She's coming forward and that little bitty stewardess tried to stop her Sandy happen. just tossed her like a napkin aside <laughs> and kept right on coming. We got off that plane. Getting on another plane to go home required a second miracle. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Well, uh, this compelling communicator, wonderful man of God, Pastor John Hagee, uh, has just told you a story that is in this book. It's called The Three Heavens, and we want you to get it. Here's how you can get your offer, and make sure you stay with us every day this month as we feature this book and more insights from this wonderful writer, uh, communicator, Pastor John Hagee. Stay tuned, watch this please. <laughs> 